Welcome to this Photoshop demo. This is your host Aaron Cox from PhotoshopDemos.com and today I wanted to show you about the interface in Photoshop and what all these little tools and na navigation bars and all this crazy jargon means. Um, well, to get started we have our file menu. This is the most basic and most essential part of Photoshop. You'll notice that you have a lot of different options and many important things like opening and closing documents, um, getting to your um, import menu where you can bring things in from your scanner. Um, you have scripts where you can basically automate different things in Photoshop and create picture packages and all kinds of fun stuff. can get into that more in depth later. Just know that this is your main menu. You're going to have a lot of options up in this menu as you can see. Everything from opening documents to turning on menus and turning off menus, working with your selections, and much, much more. So the next essential part of Photoshop is your toolbar. This is another part of Photoshop that you'll be commonly using on pretty much any document. And in the new version of Photoshop CS3, your menus are very condensed and a lot smaller so that you have more space to work, especially if you have a smaller screen. Um, it's very nice to be having these collapsible menus. Now if you want to turn off your menus completely, you can actually come up here to Windows and then you can just turn off any of these tools just by simply making sure that they're unchecked and that'll actually turn them off. Now if you've gone through here and you've turned things on and off and you just have a complete cluster of things going on, you can come up here to Workspace and do Default Workspace and that'll reset Photoshop into its default zone so that you can then get back to your standard palettes. The next part or the next thing you should really know about this particular area is this is called your toolbar and this is where all the tools in Photoshop are or at least most of them. Now you'll find that when you click and hold over any button you'll get a new flyout menu that has multiple options. The little letters that are actually next to those items are shortcut keys and a shortcut key simply defined is a button on your keyboard when you push it it actually turns that function on or turns that tool on. So what you'll be able to do is if I click on this button here you'll see that that is activated by the letter B. So if I switched over to say this tool and then I hit the letter B it would pop right back over to my tool brush. So a good thing to know about that is learn your shortcut keys and you'll feel so much more confident in Photoshop and you'll be working faster because when you're in the middle of a document in this area you don't always want to have to come back over here just to select your tool. It's kinda like if you were working on a car and you had all your tools inside your toolbox um, rather than having them next to you on the ground for easy access. So knowing those shortcut keys will keep you from having to walk all the way back over to this toolbar especially if you're lazy like me because I hate having to come back over to this toolbar every single time I need a tool. So just learn what those shortcut keys are and what they do. Another really great function about Photoshop is in your file menu you'll notice next to all the options or next to the different functions like open or close or browse whatever you want to do you have shortcut um, strokes and what those will do if you use that keystroke like alt control o or control o or control n those will do exactly what it says which is new document so let's just hop off there for a minute and I'll hold, go ahead and hit control n and you'll see that now opens up my new document window okay so again another way to shortcut the process in the Photoshop so that you can cut the time in half and not have to go always back all the way to your menus. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out for just a moment. And what we're going to look at over here, I'm just kind of coming off of my toolbar for a second, coming over to this side, is we have several default menus in Photoshop. And you have everything from your layers to your channels and your paths. Those are three essential uh, areas as well. When you're working on photos or graphics, you'll be using those quite commonly. 
uh, you have your colors area here which you can choose several different colors and your swatches if you just want to quickly grab from a variety of different colors as well the nice thing about any of these menus is there's this little area right up in here it's very hard to see you can just click on that and you have instant access to a whole range of different types of color um, some of these are more directed towards print like the Pantone or the true match colors or you can just stay with your default set of colors like your windows colors or something like that and then just um, basically stay with that basic oh, I'm gonna X that out for just a second because I don't want to save that and you'll notice now I have a new set of colors so you can just scroll through here and choose whatever works for you again if you're working on print or if you're working on web now you know where you can go to get specific colors for whatever process you're working on so now coming up into here you have several other menus which are I think relatively important uh, you have your navigation which when you have a new document open I'll go and open up a new document one more time so we have something to look at here you'll be able to use this to actually scroll in and out very quickly um, at a percentage right here you can optionally type this in you can put in 15 or 20 or whatever zoom level you want so you can quickly zoom in Photoshop and then you have your um, histogram which will give you color information uh, I don't have any color in my document right now so that's why we don't see anything uh, this is can be really essential too to give you some great insight about the colors and what is going on with your specific photo um, you also have your info tab another essential tool which will give you different values your RGB values um, you'll notice when I come over to the document I now have numbers in that area and those numbers will tell me exactly the colors that I'm on the position in my document that I'm on maybe the height and the width of a selection that I'm making and things like that okay so now you can see it now it says 314 by 444 that gives me the exact size in pixels that I've actually made a selection of so there's a lot of useful data that can be grabbed out of this area and other than that now that you know where all the tool options are and about the um, different shortcut keys I also want to make you aware that this toolbar right here across the top is where all your tool options are so you'll notice whenever you click on any of these tools you'll now see an option up here okay and every tool has different options it's not gonna always stay the same just depends on the tool that you choose so right now I have the gradient tool selected so I have a variety of different gradient tools as well as the blending mode that I want to choose and also the opacity of that specific blend that I'm going to make I'll go into more depth in other tutorials about what each of these do but just so you know when you want to vary your tools and you want to change the look and the feel you can simply click on a tool and then come up here to work with that specific tool now some of those tools and some of those menus or menu options will also be inside of these areas as well okay so this window part and then your main menu is also an essential part of Photoshop you can actually turn on or turn off certain option menus in Photoshop that work in conjunction with your tools so whenever you do turn on a tool make sure that you're either using the options here or you're turning on the appropriate window here that works in conjunction with that so then that way you're always working in a nice streamlined way and you have the options available that you need while you're working well that pretty much concludes this tutorial in this Photoshop demo I hope you enjoyed watching hopefully you know a few more things about Photoshop that maybe you didn't know this is your host Aaron Cox from PhotoshopDemos.com. We'll see you next time.